In this Resolume tutorial, we're going to show you ways to use content with alpha channels to create new shapes and backgrounds using Resolume's effects. You'll be able to add even more clips to your collection by reusing existing content. First let's go over how to properly use loops that have an alpha channel. In this composition, I have the shape shifter set loaded. It's 50 loops of various geometric 3D shapes, all with alpha channels, available on DocOptic.com. We'll be triggering these clips on Active Layer. This can be changed in the Composition menu under Clip Target. In the clip information, notice there's an alpha type dropdown, along with the A and RGBA highlighted. These are indicators that an alpha channel is available. Resolume defaults to the pre-multiplied alpha type, so if your content has artifacts or doesn't look right, make sure to test the straight option. All of our loops in the shape shifter set are pre-multiplied and resolume ready, so we're good to go. Content with alpha channels contain no background. Here in the preview window, notice the grid underneath our visual. If we disable the alpha in the clip information under RGBA, the alpha channel is disabled. By having alpha information available, we can use our content at full opacity without using blend modes. Let's trigger a clip on layer 2 and bring our opacity up to 100%. Notice how our loop on layer 2 sits on top of layer 1 even at full opacity. We can still use blending modes by bringing the opacity down to 50%, but with alpha channels we have cleaner results since no blending is required. One of the advantages of alpha channels is flexibility, specifically when using content like single shapes or elements. Since our content contains no background, we're able to use the transform properties to change the look of our shapes without worrying about borders. Easily change the position of X and Y. Do this by clicking and dragging the plus and minus buttons by our position parameters. Scale can be adjusted if we're trying to fit multiple elements on screen, or if we'd like to use a shape as a background. We can also rotate our content to change the alignment of our shapes, especially if these are being projection mapped onto specific surfaces. Let's get into two examples on how to create new shapes. The first example is with the kaleidoscope effect. First let's create a new deck and call it New Shapes. Let's copy one of our triangle loops from the shapeshifter set into an empty clip slot on the new deck. We'll trigger it and add the kaleidoscope effect. This new shape isn't very appealing. By changing the angles parameter to 0.20, we can change our triangle to a more symmetrical diamond shape. Use the zoom parameter to reveal the entire shape, and with input rotation, we can do even more with it. To change the look of our shape even further, we can move the Transform tab above our effects for more flexibility. Drag the Transform tab by clicking and holding onto the three lines here on the right, and bring it above the Video Effects tab. Now if we adjust the position X and Y parameters, our transformations are happening before Kaleidoscope takes effect, creating some interesting looks. Tweak the position and finish it off with scale to resize your new shape. Now you can duplicate this new shape and tweak it again to create more versions. This is a great way to reuse content and have different versions available. We can also add the Hue Rotate effect to change the color of our new shape, to add even more variation. Another way we can create new looks for our shapes is with the Iterate effect. Let's copy a new clip to an empty clip slot and trigger it. Next let's add the Iterate effect, and let's also move the Transform tab above our effects. The first thing you'll notice is it doesn't look too great. Let's change the Blend Mode parameter to 0.50. Let's also change the number of iterations to 0 0.10. Lastly, let's bring the scale parameter down to 0. Tweak the translate X and Y parameters of the iterate effect until you come up with the look that you like. Let's add the mirror effect so that our shape is symmetrical. Change the X parameter to 0.50. Use the detranslate and derotate parameters to change the shape even more. 
With the iterate effect, you can manipulate shapes dramatically and create lots of different looks. Don't forget that you can also adjust the scale, position, x, and y parameters in the Transform tab, especially if the iterations become cropped. Experiment with the parameters we've shown you and duplicate copies of your clips to create new variations resulting in even more content. As with most compositions, we'll want to balance our center-weighted shapes and elements with backgrounds. There are some cool things we can do with our alpha content to create interesting backgrounds. For our first background, we'll be using a single shape to fill out the four corners of our composition. Let's copy one of our shapes to an empty clip slot and trigger it. Next, we'll drag the mirror effect to our loop. Let's change both the X and Y parameters to 0.50. Drag the in-out slider to 0. And as simple as that, we have a background that fills in all four corners. For more flexibility, let's drag the Transform tab above our effects to change the look of our loop before it's altered by the mirror effect. Now we can use the position X and Y parameters to reposition our background. We can also change the scale or rotation for even more looks. And just like that, we have a simple background. Let's trigger a center-weighted shape to see how this looks together. With this method, we can easily duplicate our clip, tweak our copy, and have even more content based on a single clip. For our second background, we'll create a simple scrolling tiled background. Let's copy one of our shapes to an empty clip slot on our new shapes deck. We'll be using the video wall effect to tile our shape. Video wall is easier to use than the tile effect and is much more flexible. Bring the zoom parameter up to 1 so we can see our tiled shape. Next, increase the screens parameter until you're happy with the number of tiles. To make this background scroll, we'll add the slide effect. Choose the Up preset in the Presets dropdown to have our background scroll upwards. We can easily change the direction of the scroll by using the other presets or by animating the X or Y parameters. For an added touch, let's add the Flip effect. Change the Blend Mode to Wipe Right and bring the Opacity down to 0.50. Lastly, Enable the horizontal and vertical checkboxes so we have a background that scrolls two ways. From here we can play with some of the parameters in the video wall effect. Let's increase the number of screens and bring up the brightness vary parameter all the way up. Lastly, we can change the pan x parameter to open up some space in the center for our center weighted shapes. Let's trigger a loop on top of our background to see how it all works together. These are just a couple ways to create interesting backgrounds. Play around with the different parameters to come up with looks that appeal to you. Also try different effects. You'll be surprised with what you can come up with. We hope this tutorial has given you some new ideas to remix your visuals and create new clip variations. As always, thank you so much for your support and be sure to visit our website where you can download a free loop with Alpha Channel to try the techniques you've just learned. Also check out the Shapeshifter set, which is versatile enough to generate lots of new content for your live visuals.